This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning, Theory and Structure of PBLOs, Part 6. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what are learning objects? What characteristics do learning objects have? Number two, distinguish between the various definitions given for simple learning objects. Describe an example. And three, what is an intelligent tutoring system? Describe an example. Learning objects can be found in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Typically, they are characterized as small, reusable digital learning resources which support learning. The definition used here also includes larger environments that were designed for similar purposes. Learning objects can be classified on a grid created by the intersection of two constructs. This grid is shown on the slide. One of the constructs in this grid concerns the control of learning enterprise. So in other words, is, it, is the control being exercised on the part of the teacher, or does the student have some um, measure of control as to what is being learned and how to learn it, as in student-directed. The other construct, the second, is oriented around the process-content dichotomy. These two constructs then form the axis of the grid, and the remainder of this video clip is devoted to a discussion of the characteristics of the various systems that give form to the learning object landscape. We will start this discussion with simple learning objects, as can be found in the bottom center of the grid. The definition of simple learning objects is not easy to pin down as there are many, many factors that are referenced by learning object developers and designers. Typically, a number of tip, uh, technical issues such as accessibility, adaptability, etc. are discussed, but a focus on the learning aspects may also arise. So at one end of the spectrum, we may use the Wikipedia definition which states that a learning object is a collection of content items, practice items, and assessment items that are combined based on a single learning objective provided in a small self-contained reusable unit of learning. And since we are interested in digital forms of these objects, this needs to be added to this definition. Alternatively, Kay and Knack in 2007 define learning objects with a focus on the impact of these objects on learning, leading to a description of learning objects as interactive web-based tools that support the learning of specific concepts. Several of these types of learning objects, as designed by undergrad B.Ed. students at UOIT, one is currently shown on the screen, can be found at, and I will provide the URL that is uh, listed at the bottom of the screen in the WebCT portion of this course. While these definitions can be interpreted from a variety of perspectives, generally the objects provide simple activities that allow for very little act interactivity, at least beyond clicking a button on a button that performs a specific action and these are concentrated on a single set of concepts. This essentially reduces the simple LO to a content delivery system. Regarding the d question of the presence of a problem, if the problem-based problem learning definition given earlier in the course is applied, specifically that PBL is a curriculum model designed around real-life problems that are ill-structured, open-ended, or ambiguous, and it's suggested that PBL engages students in intriguing, real and relevant intellectual inquiry and allows them to learn from these life situations, as in Fogarty 1997, it should be evident that simple LOs do not meet the test. In a quote from Urban Lorraine 1996, intelligent tutoring systems, moving on to the next of the types of uh, systems that can be found within the learning object landscape. ITS, or learn intelligent tutoring systems, emerged from artificial intelligence at the very time that artificial intelligence was struggling to transcend the goal of mi mimicking human intelligence by creating machines that could think like humans. As researchers came to grips with the intractable problems of this task, they realized that trying to emulate human cognition with computers was misguided because they assumed that people thought like computers. The resulting crisis provoked the reassessment of AI's goals, allowing researchers to begin making progress in areas such as expert systems. Expert systems research was productive because it concentrated on systems that were useful in their, their own right, 
rather than attempting to create thinking machines. However, this shift in focus prompted many to lose interest in ITS, and at the same time, educational psychology was undergoing a paradigm shift from behaviorism towards cognition, constructivism, and socially situated learning. This revolution prompted many educators to question the practices that evolved during the post-war education boom. The ITS environment, or LO, is one in which the artificial intelligence provided within the system takes on the traditional role of the teacher in defining the goals that can be to be reached and the process by which the goals will be attained. Simplistic problems may be embedded within the system, but they are all under the teacher's or the system's control and the learner is directed towards the correct solution. Low-end examples of these types of environments can be found in the typing tutors and math drill programs uh, games which were popular in the 1990s. Some of these can be seen, or some exa commercial examples of these are shown on the current slide. Expect you to read the following papers as a ba theoretical basis for learning objects um, information that we were just taking a look at. These articles give a brief overview of the relationship of many theoretical structures referenced in this and the following video clip. So the first one is K and Kanak 2007, Evaluating the Learning and Learning Objects. And the second one is Urban Lorraine 1996, Intelligent Tutoring Systems and Historic Review in the Context of the Development of Artificial Intelligence and Educational Psychology. And finally, the synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, the learning object domain is defined by two axes. Why were these two scales used to characterize the domain? Number two, why would simple learning objects be characterized as content delivery system? Number three, why are the problems that are addressed in simple learning objects not counted as problems that are appropriate for problem-based learning? And number four, why would the shift from behaviorism to cognition and social constructivism prompt a move away from ITS.